Good morning, welcome to my kitchen. Today, we are going to make John Knox Ranch's famous snickerdoodle bars. Now, I always make cookies at John Knox Ranch as bars because you can get 30 cookies out of a cookie sheet instead of 12 when you do individual cookies. So it's faster and easier to do for a crowd. And it's particularly delicious with these snickerdoodles. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. <clears throat> and normally I would use my big mixer over here, but um, since you're making it at home, I reduced the recipe to be a family size and we're gonna go old school with the hand mixer. Okay, so you're gonna start with, it's a really easy cookie recipe. You're gonna start with butter that's softened. I microwaved it for 30 seconds. Um, you don't want it to be liquidy, you just want it to be soft. Okay, got my butter and my sugar. How much sugar? One cup and three quarters cups sugar. And we're gonna cream those together. So here we go. So easy when the butter is already soft. And most cookie recipes call for this stuff when you cream the butter and the sugar. But if you do it really, really well, it gives your cookie a nice, uh, a nice texture. There's a lot of butter in these cookies because they are very, very buttery and that makes them delicious. So do not substitute anything gross like Crisco or shortening instead of your um, butter. All right, so I've creamed my butter and my sugar. I'm gonna add two eggs. And this is the point where you wanna beat it until it's really nice and fluffy. Now, this is an easy recipe to do with kids. And since you don't even have to make it into individual cookies, it's super um, kid friendly and family friendly. And snickerdoodles, especially in the bar form, they'll keep for quite a while. And if you, like any baked good, if you want to store it, you should store it in the freezer because that will keep it a lot fresher. Okay. So that's all nice and fluffy. Okay, now we're gonna add two and three quarters cups of flour. I'm just gonna dump it all in. A quarter teaspoon of salt and two teaspoons of baking powder. Getting a little cloud here. This is a pretty soft dough. Okay. And you just need to mix it until everything is nice and mixed up. My mom taught me how to get all the batter off of my beaters by lifting it up slowly as you turn it down. Okay, so that's what your dough looks like. Now, this is the trick because this the dough is pretty sticky. So the way that I um, put it into the pan, um, be sure your hands are clean. I just washed mine. I'm gonna pan the pan real good. Now, the size of the pan matters. This is called a half sheet cookie sheet. And you, you don't want to overfill your cookie sheet. So if you don't have a pan that is this size, if yours is a little bit smaller, don't use all the dough, okay? Uh, if you overfill, it'll overflow your pan. Okay, so I just, take, I just take my dough and I'm just gonna dump it into the pan. and I'm gonna use my hands to spread it. If you try to spread it with a rubber spatula, it just makes a mess. It's, and it's time consuming and not fun. So I, do, I use my hands. And if it's sticking to your fingers, then just get them wet. Get them wet in the sink, uh, just a little bit of cold water. Then I just pat it out. And you don't have to worry too much about whether or not it's perfectly even, because it'll even right out when it's being baked. Okay. There we go. See that? Beautiful. It's going to be delicious. Okay. Now, you're going to sprinkle the top with cinnamon and sugar. 
And I used about three quarters of a cup of sugar and a couple of tablespoons, generous tablespoons of cinnamon. You want it to be fairly dark, but still with plenty of sugar. Now, don't go skimpy on this step. You want a lot of cinnamon and sugar on here. And see, I'm using this uh, measuring cup to sprinkle it on because I don't want just, I want a nice layer on there, not just a dribble. It's not decoration. This is flavor and it is good flavor. Okay. There we go. So all in all, I probably used about half a cup on there. So you can reduce down if you want to so that you aren't making more than you need. All right, so I'm sticking them in the oven for three at 350 and it'll take them about mm, 15 to 20 minutes to bake. So we'll check back in when we pull them out, okay? Okay, they're ready and don't they look delicious? All right, now this is your super secret cook trick of today. Cut hot things or baked goods with a plastic knife and you won't tear them. So I'm gonna cut these into 30 cookies, six by five. And so see how that plastic knife just slides right through. These smell so good when they are baking. Cinnamon and sugar and butter, it just, nothing smells better. Hey, hold on, Mom. What in the world is that? Well, that hi, guys. So, oh, man. Yeah, I thought you might smell these cooking. Snickerdoodles. Teaching everybody how to make John Knox Ranch snickerdoodle bars. I'm just saying camp style. Yeah. Look at that. Close look at this, Andy. Look at that. Yum. You guys oh. want one? Oh, you know it. All right, let's get a spatula. These are really hot because I literally just got them out of these. Oh, hey, it's Henry Allen, the director of John Knox Ranch. Hey, Henry, you're on speaker. How are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? What's going on? Good. We're just teaching everybody how to make John Knox Ranch snickerdoodle bars. Oh, I thought I smelled something good. I think I smelled all the way <laughs> all, from the, all the way from John Knox, huh? <laughs> well, that's pretty okay. fun. We'll, we'll, um, we'll take some so, over to your to the ranch and leave them on your porch for you and Emily and the boys. That sounds great. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Talk to you later. Mm -hmm. Bye. It's a great thing to do with the family. Y'all have fun.